Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. Your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy here. And uh, yes, more umber. I'm going to keep going. You can't stop me. You can't stop me, John Law, Johnny Law, Kappa. Anyway, um, yeah, I got a few more. I want to. Uh, it's in my system. We'll see. I've got. I got other things in my brain too. The, uh, I've learned to just let uh, the creative process percolate the way it wants to. I find when you start imposing a bunch of stuff on your, uh, on your, at least for I'm just talking for me. You might be different, but I find when I, uh, so I should say it like that. When I, when I decide, oh, I, 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 I need to do this or that because uh, you know some more of those or that. Usually, it, it just works out not to be good or, oh, that was you know a popular uh, painting on the channel. I should do more like that. It's like, eh. but first of all, I'm not really that motivated by that kind of thinking. Second of all, it just doesn't pan out. You got to go. You got to have pure motivations if you want to be, um, you know, a fine artist. And uh, not to belabor the fine art thing. I've talked about it before, but it's abused. It's abused. Okay, but it doesn't mean it's not real. Okay, that's all I got to say about that. Um, won't spend a lot of time. Yeah, the uh, I will tell you what the palette is on this. Uh, we're leaning into that burnt humber, really. And I had raw umber in the palette. I don't think I I actually touched it. Maybe I did a little in the sky. Um, a raw sienna I brought in for the opacity factor, and um, good old lead white and Mars black again. Mars black, really an impressive color. I'm loving it more and more. Really, I can. Uh, I'm gonna. I decide the next full color painting I do. That I'll try swapping out the Mars black with the uh, the usual um, ivory black, and uh, see where we go. And, and of course, I've done this. I've done this with black spinel before. Black spinel, I really like it, but it doesn't seem as op it's supposed to be very opaque but I, in my experience with it hasn't been that so and it might be that it just costs so bloody much I, I it affects my thinking anyway I want to read a bit from uh, John Carlson's lovely book Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting as someone pointed out in the channel we all have these books and half the time uh, we get them we look at the pictures we read a blurb here or there <laughs> <laughs> put them on the shelf and then you know go do something else right so this way you can watch me put a painting together nice little five by seven and uh, instead of my usual burbling on we'll listen to John Carlson's burbling on and we're picking up where we left off the last time we were reading this is about design which is to, to me one of the biggest hurdles to that that you know we we have to face as painters as designing and uh, uh, uh really good comment on the channel recently from a photographer how you know he sees this as one of the places where a lot of photographers have it over uh the painters because the painters there's a lot of additional problems to go with painting but in landscape photography composition is your your big one that and lighting you know you have a lot of the same issues but in painting you've got brush fracture you've got all kinds of other stuff to deal with so um and usually one of the things that ends up falling short is composition he's he's totally right about that anyway uh page 49 starting at the top he's talking about design the whole chapter is about design no law or formula can be concocted which good composition would always be as assured this is absolutely true if I can interject I have lots of books well I have two books on composition one's pretty good the other is just really obtuse I've never been able to get into it uh, it's on the shelf somewhere but you know I don't is it yeah called composing pictures I really should open it up have another look at it because maybe it, it'll hit me better now but moving on I can only suggest that the student experiment with charcoal and paper with any given motif in mind until he feels that one arrangement out of several made embodies his idea better than all the others combined and that is why <coughs> that he tr then tried to decide why it is better so this is great advice 
<clears throat> when I was doing illustration and for a while I was working with comics and things like that you work with little thumbnails and so you can't get into details or anything you're just looking for good compositions good flow you know anyway differing proportions a variety of shapes and sizes is a requisite of decoration and the very first underpainting slash drawing in of the big shapes in a motif be careful how you divide and subdivide your spaces the larger spaces will always demand more attention from the eye than lesser ones even when the latter have brighter color or greater value contrasts intrinsically compose then for the thing that you deem most important by giving it the preponderance of space boy he's throwing around some vocabulary yeah, preponderance means you know an, an excess uh, just for I'm sure a lot of you guys are bright you know that but whatever the next mass and sequence of importance need not be the next largest it may instead be the most important in color or value and so on down the line do not divide your canvas into equal size spaces unless you do so for a definite artistic reason that would be the M. Francis grid which just helps us line everything up and uh, and get a sense of uh, how to place the uh, bits and the reference onto our canvas yeah and he's got he's got the M. Francis grid here diagram 9 in the rectangular divisions of space shown here I am indebted to Arthur W. Dow who promulgated the scotch plaid idea of space division hmm yes I see that so in diagram 10 he's got the lines uh, like they would divide the middle is like uh, all the way over maybe one-fifth of the way to our uh, left and the same thing with the line in the bottom yeah seeing that's a more interesting way of dividing the space and it, indeed it is you know well this is getting all very obtuse when you see something I'm gonna skip a whole bunch of this because it's all referring to his illustrations there uh, but a bunch of obtuse whatevers this is a thing see when you start getting into that stuff you lose me on the composition you know uh, I remember I have a, a fantastic book it's actually quite valuable by Andrew Loomis is called creative illustration it ha was reprinted definitely get it he's a genius a great writer um, and you know he was talking about the problems of composition and he had one approach I thought was very interesting where he just starts throwing down all these radical um, you know abstract lines and then starts looking for meaning in it which is as good an approach of, as any what I tend to do is like so much of what I do is based on um, negative experiences bad paintings <laughs> I go now nah, that doesn't work now nah, that doesn't work that doesn't work and so it pushes me into something that does work you know anyway we'll pick up here uh, when you see something interests you paint to paint do not flop down to some cool convenient spot and begin by painting walk around your motif two or three times and decide what quality is it that made you wish to paint it and this would be the same if you're out there in the world with your your camera or your phone camera or whatever um, definitely look at one of the big here huge tip huge tip for those of you that made it past the uh, famous six-minute mark um, instead of taking all your photos just standing up pointing your camera downward or straight scrunch down on your on the balls of your uh, feet okay and get a lower perspective that's super super good tip I do that a lot when I'm doing photography and when I do photography it's always to feed the uh, the painting process I don't sit there and try and make awesome photos I try to look for all the best ways to compose the scene and a lot of times that means getting much lower in fact you'd be amazed everyone just takes pictures from this human standpoint but you need to you need to look at things artistically and usually um, like my wife and I might be driving around and she'll see a scene and she'll say oh what about that honey and then, yeah it's beautiful but we're like up on a hill looking down bad painting almost guarantee it okay how do I know well guess because because I did it Uncle Mike did it anyway his advice is to uh, walk around and look at it from a bunch of different angles and really uh, the the best advice he's given on this page is for you to analyze what is it that 
why do I think this would make a good painting? What, what about this is moving me to think this would make a good painting? And then the right on top of that is, what about this needs to be excised? What about this needs to be removed? What about this scene is not important and not uh, going to give me a cohesive picture? You know, those are some good questions, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. He's drawn more diagrams, more diagrams. A lot of really nice drawings, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll have to. I don't want to waste your time. I'll have to now uh, analyze this next page. <clears throat> Still, it's always good to look at the Carlson, even if it just sparks me riffing um, and, and and discussing things. So maybe we'll talk a little about this painting. Um, First of all, you see where that uh, sort of straight horizon line is? That was a completely diagonal hillside. And in the background were like the Grand Tetons or something. So this was a path on a mountainous hill. Uh, I removed all that because I don't like painting big diagonal sides of hills. I don't like painting the Grand Tetons. You're nothing wrong with it if you're a, a mountain painter. Um, I've been looking a lot at a book by... Um, Oh, Johannes Vluthius, Vluthius, V-L-O-O-T-H-U-I-S, it's a very nice book, and he paints mountains, and he paints them beautifully, so I'm not dissing the mountain painter, if you want to paint mountains, paint mountains, but I don't want to paint them, I only want to paint one, anyway, that said, um, uh, what I liked about this scene was the um, the effect being created by the two trees that are in uh, the the near foreground, the you know middle foreground, and the intimate quality of that, how they're dark, offset against the lightness of everything else. I am a sucker for that kind of thing, and it's a very um, pictorialist sort of motif as well. So I decided to keep that. And just straighten out the um, the the landscape in the back, you know, from a hillside to a field, um, and then these little uh, trees and stuff. I'm you see me painting in there now. They're sort of influenced by other things in the scene, but a lot of in a lot of cases they're just kind of um, you know out of the imagination. So it's a definite combination of or mix of um, imagination and the reference which is where you want your paintings to go and this is one of the reasons too why like why all the five by sevens Mike well the five by seven is gonna allow me to make a lot of moves like that with a lot less aggravation um, and to be honest if I wanted to go after the scene larger that five, I, that five by seven process could definitely influence that because um, although you know, I could probably do the same thing uh, without much effort at an 8 by 10 size. I, I mean, if you're jumping up to 12 by 18 or something like that, I might start to have some issues, or maybe not. The thing is, is like, you really need to internalize the design process. You really need to um, think about these things, have some thought about it, and save yourself some, do, some doing some bad paintings, or just do the bad paintings, but do bad 5 by 7s. You got boxes of them. Um, you can paint over the top. It won't be that long. I'm going to be doing some revisions. Only not a 5 by 7 So I've got some other large paintings. I know they're hiding. I keep just painting and tucking them away. And uh, there's a bunch of stuff from, say, 2015 or 16 that I maybe want to have a crack at. Or 17 or 18 or 19. Who freaking knows? Uh, you know, anyway. That's maybe on the agenda, I'm thinking. We're getting close. I, I like this little painting, and I really enjoyed the uh, burn umber with the uh, raw sienna. That's a great, great combination it's with the lead white and the Mars black. It's almost a perfect earth palette, leaning towards the reds. Um, been working a lot with this yellow uh, ochre. Uh, not yet. Excuse me, brown ochre. <laughs> I got grooves in my brain. Um, that's been. Pre I did a painting yesterday, so pretty exciting developments there with a palette that's less red but still lumber you know anyway thank you for joining me today I really appreciate you there was a live version of this uh, in the members area where you get the uh, you know fly on the wall 
the uh, you know the whole the whole situation live. I burble along as I paint and uh, pass along tips that I don't even remember right now. So um, until I come back with another video for you, though, please do me a favor, do me a solid, take good care of yourself, your family, your loved ones. Try and love your enemies and uh, stay out.